very good evening to all our viewers and uh, welcome to this week's edition of the agenda. My name is uh, Tayvon Jebela, your host. Tonight on the show we are very excited uh, to be joined by Dr. Uh, uh, Alfredo Hengari. He is uh, the press secretary in the presidency as well as uh, Chileni Mongudi, whom people have started calling a veteran journalist now. He's been around for a long time and uh, he is a, a journalist writing mostly for the Namibian and other international publications. And we are here to talk about the relationship between uh, the media and the state, the issues of accountabil accountability and so forth. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for, Doctor, thank you very much for making time. No, it's a pleasure for me to yeah, be here yeah. with you. Wonderful. Veteran journalist, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for having me. You make me feel old when you say that. Yeah, no, no. No, apparently you, you deserve it. Um, um, so, okay. Doc, uh, I'll start with you. I want you to give me a sense of uh, your perception of the Namibian media in general and the role that it ought to play. I'm asking this question because Mm -hmm. You've issued uh, a number of uh, communiques in, a, in, the cup, in the past couple of days in which you take aim at some of the reporting of the media. If you can give me a sense of how you see the media in the country. Uh, well, I think the, uh, the state of the media in the country is not without its own challenges. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's also important to, to say that uh, generally as a country, we have uh, done very well mm -hmm. in as far as freedom of the press is concerned. Yeah. Uh, we are ranked quite highly globally. We are 18 out of 180 countries. Yes. Uh, when you look at the Reporters Without Borders Index, which is the authoritative uh, index on uh, uh, press freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Africa, we are number two. And uh, not because, you know, we experienced any setbacks in the past year and so on. Mm. Uh, it's just because uh, Seychelles did uh, exceptionally well. Mm. And uh, we, on our part, we improved on that ranking. So there is uh, a clear commitment uh, to press freedom on the part of the Namibian government. And that is demonstrated in the, those types of ranking. But as I've said, uh, the, the press is not without its own challenges. Mm. It's not perfect. Uh, so there, there is a lot of room for improvement in as far as the quality of journalism is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, Tileni, if you can give me, maybe throw, if I can throw the same question to you, what, what do you think is the role of the, of the media, uh, especially in the context of his, of his relationship with the state? Well, um, <coughs> we, the basic concept is that as a media, we serve to inform, educate, and entertain. And um, we are known as a fourth estate for a reason, so that we can play that watchdog role on all the other uh, pillars of state, whether it's the executive branch, the judiciary, and the legislative branch, and other uh, uh, important stakeholders or s uh, societal players in, mm. in, 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 in any country. Mm. Now, we also have that role to hold power to account, unfortunately. Yep. And, and it's, it's a massive responsibility, especially when, especially in Namibia, where the only sort of legislative uh, backing you have is more from the constitution. Yes, it's supreme, but there's nothing else apart from the constitution saying that you are allowed to express yourself mm. and the constitution guarantees freedom of the media or the press. Yeah. And that's it. So it makes it difficult to compel uh, people like Dr. Engari here to, to talk to us mm. and, 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 and communicate with us. But the, 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 the key issue for me is just that since we find ourselves here, we have a role to play. Uh, the government has a role to play, so we might as well find common ground. And, and I'm, by common ground, I'm not saying that we, we will be uh, friends at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that we are only going to publish or, or broadcast only things that uh, the state feels 
are, are worth publishing or are okay, mm. whereas we feel that maybe we need to. So that, that's not going to be there. It's, it's going to be a back and forth. But I just feel that we do need to be cordial mm. and, and understand that we are each other's stakeholders. Do, do, you, do you feel that there's a cordial relationship right now between, particularly between the media and Dr. Hengari's office, the, or the president's office, through, Mr. through, through Dr. Hengari? You know, this is a very difficult question to answer because, you see, when President Gangov came into office in 2015, he came in with uh, um, guarantees and, 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 and pronouncements of he will support the media, mm. uh, he believes in transparency and all of this. But then you, you down the line, as we speak today, we find ourselves with in a situation where we feel that sometimes his press office is the worst in the history of, at least from when I started practicing as a journalist. I mean, you even had people like um, Kwaita Shanyangana who were in, in that position, as, as who were filling that role as uh, more or less like press secretary or not with mm. a different title. And, and we find them to be a bit more accessible. And, and sometimes, uh, even though we felt that they were limited in some of the, the, the questions and, and the scope or the things that we wanted them to discuss with us, mm. we felt there were some limitations. But there was a, a sense of accessibility and a sense of understanding that we are each other's stakeholders. And, and this is the difficulty we've been having with uh, President Gangob's administration is that it's it's always when it's easier it's always easier when when it's the presidency announcing something or when whatever needs to be communicated appears to be uh, uh, making the president look appear good in public but when when we are having difficult questions and, and this is unfortunately part of the process when you are running a government you will have to answer difficult questions mm. and that's where the, the 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 wheels fall off that's where uh, the office of the president uh, then become very um, hostile and antagonistic. I mean, just two years ago or so, the president announced that uh, at the SWAPO event, if I'm not mistaken, that the colleagues from the, the Namibian, one of us, one of the journalists, is harassing his children. Um, they want this and they want that. And I'm saying, but. Uh, the president is a press office, there's a press secretary who should by now have a rapport with all the media houses and all the journalists in the country, especially the ones who deal with uh, political issues. Mm. And then we get to the bottom of who was it? W was it was this person a real journalist? Was it uh, and, and if they say they come from the from the Namibian or from Namibian Sun, who was it? So we get to the bottom of it. Now it, it's hanging in the air, you know, and, it, mm. it, and, and these are the things that the president's been throwing around that you have these people who are not elected, they pro proclaim themselves as champions of the people, and they are just harassing me and my family and my government. <laughs> okay, Doc, please. Yeah, no, I think uh, the, uh, the, the colleague is uh, being very simplistic in his assumptions, in his arguments. Um, when you look at the the level of transparency and access to meetings of the president uh, and the commitment also of President Gengo to respond to questions, however difficult, however silly they, mm -hmm. may, they may be, has been total. And also when you look at uh, the, just go and do research on the number of press releases that has been shared under the Gengo presidency compared to any other presidency, just for ease of reference, mm -hmm. you would notice that there has been a significant flow of information mm -hmm. from the Gengo presidency. And I think, had you not been simplistic also, I would not have referred you to where we sit on the rankings. It's a function of the relationship that exists between the government and the press. I think the problem with the press at times, and, and not everybody, some colleagues in the press, is that they, they, don't, they don't want to be held accountable. They don't want to be responsible. You spoke about it's a big responsibility. But uh, when you have a big responsibility, you must be accountable. And when you fail, 
you must also allow others to point out those failures. Mm. I think it was in 2002 or 2000 when the then uh, Minister of uh, Information and Broadcasting at the time, Idipo Amutenya, he was asked about the, what is the link between uh, the media and government. I think he said something like, no, well, uh, it's healthy, but there is creative tension. And that's, that's normal in a democracy. Mm. Because as I said, the press is not perfect. When you don't live up to your own self-regulatory code of ethics and conduct, someone must call you out. And I can assure you that if that does not happen, if I see a problem, if I see a challenge, if I see that the president was quoted out of context deliberately or certain things were omitted, I will raise it. It's mm -hmm. uncomfortable, I know, for mm -hmm. some in the media, because especially when you are used to getting away with murder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. I will raise it. We will raise it. So yeah. it's, it's, it's part of that healthy and creative tension that should exist between mm. the, the media yeah. and specifically the presidency which I represent. So I think that must be very clear. Mm. It's not just going to be carte blanche for you and you, know, you say whatever you want to say, you, you publish falsehoods and we keep quiet. Mm. We'll call them out. And I know that at times, when you are used to operating in a certain way, it unsettles you. But that's why there's improvement. It's because people become unsettled, they become cautious. Mm. I'm sure you have read your own code of ethics and conduct. You know what it, what it says about news gathering and reporting. You know that. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you there are about 13 points just on that aspect. And when you look at them carefully, a number of times, maybe 10 of those are not adhered to. So we need to go back to the drawing board. Mm. So, so, so l l let me ask you this, Dr. Hengari. So the accessibility of the media to your office is one thing. The, the cordial nature of that access is another. Mm. And Tileni here seemed to suggest that the, I mean, he says, for example, that uh, we access your office through your invites. Mm -hmm. You invite us, but where the media has initiated that communication to say, Doc, we are seeking communication, we are seeking confirmation and clarity on this matter. Somehow, uh, you are not as accessible as you are when you are the one initiating that, that kind of communication. But the question to you, really, Doc, here is the cordial nature. Why mm -hmm. is it that this friction even your, your own pronouncements when you when you when you hit back to the media it's not you know it's very frosty why but i think uh, when uh, the the media or some in the press don't respect their own self-regulatory code of conduct and ethics and when there are untruths and lies peddled about the president. Uh, I don't think that you'd expect us to give you the other cheek. Uh, as the presidency, we will engage in a manner that is robust. And it's normal. I don't understand why uh, the press in this country expects to be treated with kids gloves when they do certain things that are not, that are not right. It's, it's, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. So our relationship must be professional, right? Mm. Uh, but within that professionalism, there's nothing wrong with a robust engagement. Now, since maybe some feel that they can be harmful towards others and others must not respond, I think that's where the, the challenge is because I think when you go back, once again to the code of ethics, yeah. uh, it talks about uh, uh, a journalism that must not be harmful towards others. Yes. It talks about a journalism that is truthful, that verifies facts. It talks about a journalism that is cautious and careful in the manner in which it presents news. When the president 
when a headline is presented, it also talks about those issues, about headlines mm. that must reflect as far as possible, yeah. you know, uh, the reality. But we have sensational headlines where the objective is clearly to try and uh, present a newsmaker in a bad light. Because there are people who don't read, they just check the headline and see the person is, is presented in a bad light. President Gengo blames colonialism. <laughs> you know, but, but, without any context, but, and I'm glad, and I'm glad that but, some of your colleagues, some of your colleagues, I think it was the Secretary General of the Editors Forum of Namibia, she issued a, a statement by way of, uh, of a voice note where she says, we agree with the presidency that news must be preceded in context, statements of the president should be quoted correctly and in context. She says that. She says that she agrees with us. And mm. had we not raised that issue last week, I think that, 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 that specific issue by now would have been a moot point. So mm. we need to be clear on some of these things. Don't expect docility <laughs> on the part of the presidency. If maybe that's what you prefer, then I clearly I you, you have the wrong candidate. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. So, so, so you before see, we go my, for a break, no, yeah, my, my response please. to this is very yeah. um, simplistic, as, as uh, Doctor is saying. That you see the the problem with 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 with, uh, with the politicians in Namibia or the political officers is that they they want to preside, they want the perks and the glamour that comes with their office and their titles. But they don't want to deal with the unpleasant part of it. The scrutiny and everything. And the scrutiny. Now, one yeah. of it is, um, I'll, I'll give you, since we're talking about trivialities and uh, uh, um, simplicities and so on. But the, the core, the very essence of journalism is that we need to ask difficult questions and we need to do this. And, and when I hear something, this is the one thing that politicians think because uh, Dr. Angari is also guilty of it, always insinuate, he's talking about us making insinuations all the time and innuendo, but he's also always insinuating that there's an agenda from the media. He never elaborates on this agenda, who's behind it and why and what. So there's always this insinuation that, okay, yeah, no, you guys are out to, to target us. But then sometimes we are asking questions because we need clarity. And we don't dream up information, unfortunately. It comes from the society, and, and what, what is in the headlines mirrors the society. So when, when, when the president cannot explain that he met President Ramaphosa's aide, and he can't even admit to it, he can't explain why, while we are getting statements, sworn statements from the foreign country, saying, well, we, we were at State House, we were accommodated in Namibia State House, we met the president. So, then the president doesn't. The presidency doesn't want to answer those questions, and then it becomes the media's fault. It's the journalist's fault. And then another thing is, we're talking about the cordial relationships. Yes, it's true that it's a give and take. Now, when when the presidency sees it fit to announce, give us statements via WhatsApp, but we may not. Lo and behold, ask, send the presidency questions via WhatsApp. And you follow up a week later because your answers were not, you'll be told, no, send an email. Mm. Now, I'm saying if, if, if the office is using WhatsApp as a tool of communication, why can't we also just use it as a tool of communication? Because it's easier. So these are the trivialities that, and technicalities that are always being brought about, you know? No, we didn't answer you. And, and the truth is also that, um, like our code of ethics says that we have to give time years uh, opportunities for people to respond Which you don't, most of the time. and we give mm. and, and I can give you ample examples my mm. my experience dealing with the presidency where you and you send questions and they're not answered after a month or a week and then we follow up and then you are told no send an email or no you know so so I'm not saying that the questions must be answered the way we want them answered but I feel that there's a, a responsibility in fact for somebody holding the office of the presidency there's an obligation to respond to, to, to questions, especially when they are dealing with matters that we, we, we consider uh, matters of national interest or okay. national concern. 
Okay, we go for uh, a quick break and then return. Uh, Dr. Yangara, I'm sure, would wa want to, to respond to that. Africa Good Morning is a current affairs program that brings you the latest from Southern Africa and beyond. News, economics, sport, weather, interviews, and so much more. For any advertising or news-related queries, contact agm at synergy.com.na. Africa Good Morning, bringing Africa to you. AgriMonitor is your weeklijkste landbouwkundige program wat jou die jongste nies in die landbouwverwante bedrijf en onderwerpe wat daar aan gekoppel is brang. Vir enige advertentie of niesverwante navraag, contact agrimonitor at synergy.com.na We continue our conversation with uh, Dr. Hengari and Tileni Mongoli. Now, Dr. the the you you spoke earlier about reporters without borders being that authoritative source of uh, media freedom statistics mm -hmm. and uh, in 2021 world press freedom uh, the 2021 world press freedom index cited you mm -hmm. as uh, having launched verbal attacks on journalists um, I, th I think you were subjected uh, to questions by the local media to comment on that and uh, you said at the time that it is simply a question of journalists not wanting to be held accountable. Do you think that, uh, because it, it is very, very pos possible that you have made history by being the first press secretary in the presidency to be quoted in this <laughs> report <laughs> as having launched a, a, a attacks on journalism. And we don't know whether that contributes to how our position now is fluctuating. Your response? No, no I think, uh, you know, uh, in that very same year, we, in Africa, we were number one in that very same year. And uh, when you look at um, our position since then, even when you look at our points, you would see that we improved on our points. La uh, this year, we are number 18 globally, as I've, as I've mentioned and uh, we moved from the position of 24 to 18. So there has been improvements in, uh, uh, when it comes to press freedom. And, uh, and, and in all honesty, it's not only a function of what you journalists do. Most importantly, it's what we in government do to yeah. ensure that you can report as journalists in a climate that is free, that is conducive. Yes. And I think just to touch briefly on uh, what uh, my friend here inaccurately raised. Uh, when you look at um, the presidency, um, I can assure you over 90% of the time will respond to your queries. If we don't respond, it's also a response. It's no comment. You as a journalist, you ought to know that. You ought to know that. We are going to fill the so, void. So, so, we are going to so fill the it's, void. A, it's, a, it's a principle of journalism that you must also accept. But on the question of transparency, accountability, I think that charge, if you want to charge us to say we, we don't live by that ethos, that will be a blatant untruth. I don't want to say a lie but it's untrue. Uh, let me just give you an example. Um, I think it was two years ago, uh, we were hosting, the president was, was hosting a senior uh, official from the European Union. And he was sitting in the meeting and he was waiting for journalists to leave. You could see that this guy is waiting for journalists to leave. And uh, the president um, it allows the journalist to remain in most of the meetings unless the guest or visitor says, no, you know, I want this meeting to be private, it's excellence. I don't want the media to be present. And he said, but I've never seen stuff like this. Mm. Uh, even in Europe, I don't see the media having this type of access to a head of state. And so it's the truth. 
So when, when around the same time when, um, when Eddie Mumbu from Nampa asked the president, uh, I can't recall what, what, what his question it, it was. It was about the, the Erindi investment and in, in, in a certain uh, gentleman from Mexico. Yeah, yeah. And where the president said, it's none of your business. <laughs> now, you see, those are the questions that we say. You can't tell me that you are transparent, you are welcoming the media, you are giving us access. But in the same vein, you are either trivializing the media, you are vilifying them. And or censoring. Yeah. Well, censoring not so much because... In the case of Eddie, they... they yeah. You, you can't dictate, the generally, apart from NBC, they call the presidency editors. can't dictate <laughs> to media houses in Namibia, apart from the bullying that's hap that we hear is happening at NBC, where we hear the uh, presidency is directly involved in insisting on what must be aired and not. Um, no, that's, your, that's your own fiction. Yeah, yeah no, 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 but, no, it's fine. But my, you can, my, uh, you my, can my good, in it. My, my good friend can respond on that. Yeah, yeah, but the other issue for me is, the, the, the serious thing is, you can't tell us that you are giving us access, but S very important, pertinent questions you are failing to answer. Yes, you're saying no comment, but then if you are saying no comment, then you should also not come back and then vilify and demonize our reports because we gave you the opportunity, you didn't respond. And when you come back, you want to say, well, there's, there's innuendo, there's, uh, there's a, an agenda behind the scenes, which then for me smacks of a government that is trying to blame its failure on governance with the media because we are just highlighting those failures of governance and we are not creating them and 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 if, if we are honest the government should accept that the people on the ground are not happy and and that also speaks to uh, I, I think you tweeted with one of my colleagues saying that we are self-appointed and we are always attacking the president where is the science where is the uh, uh, um, yeah, no, it's a fair question. I yeah, mean, yeah, I understand. But then, you if, know, if you think, if you look at the president's showing, 2014 elections. You are talking like a politician, no, not no, a just, journalist. I'm, I'm and that's you. what that's what I caution against. You, we want journalists and not politicians. No, we are if asking. You want to be a politician, partisan. You know, you must no, declare. No, 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 no. We are you just asking questions. Some of the things that we see, that we observe, uh, we see opinions of journalists that are presented as reports and we have a problem with that you know that as a journalist that there's a difference between a comment mm -hmm. and a report there's a difference between an editorial mm -hmm. and, and a, a news report report. you know yes. that very well Fair unfortunately enough. unfortunately as a critical reader i see i can see bias and i can see opinions of a person in a report. Now, when we call that out, mm -hmm. we have a problem. We provide you with elaborate answers. What do you do? Because you've already written the report. You've already, you know, you have already, your bias in as far as the issue is concerned is, is already evident. So the answers that are provided to you, you just ignore them, you take maybe one sentence. One sentence, basically, more to say, well, we contacted the presidency and, and, and the, the, the answer is reflected there. But generally speaking, the, the report is a clear reflection of your own personal bias and not to present the facts. We have a problem with that and we shall not keep quiet about that. So, so it's okay for, 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 so what you are advocating for is the, je the media should not highlight this lapses in governance in government. No, no, no. And, and hold, that. And hold, no, no, on no. hold government accountable. No one is saying that. Because you are saying the moment we write something, and I'm, I've seen I'm it. speaking to an issue, an issue that is quite specific in as far as some of the journalism is concerned. Okay. And I'm not the only one to warn against some of these things. I think uh, it was last year, uh, the uh, the, 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 the media specialist at the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung in South Africa, he, he warned clearly against the danger of opinion journalism. And that's what we are cautioning against. Namibians must be presented with facts, they must be presented with truth, and they must make up their minds on that basis. They should not make up their minds on the basis of the opinion of Tileni, which is, which is couched as a report. Let me, let, let me ask you this, doctor. I mean, my, first, my very first question to you was on um, 
your perception of the media. And part of what I was trying to get out of you was whether you think that you genuinely think that there is a, an agenda within the media space against President Hagegengo. See, I cannot, uh, I think the, at times we become victims of our own success. And uh, President Gengop has been very open uh, with the media, with journalists, and with Namibians, broadly speaking. Highly accessible as a leader. Uh, and uh, it's not something that uh, many would want to talk about or to write about. You will not see investigative, so-called investigative reports about uh, the president participating in leading 14 town hall meetings in 2016 and 14 town hall, town hall meetings in 2019. You will not see, you know, stories developed around some of those issues because apparently they are positive. So we don't talk in this country, we should not talk about the positive aspects. We need headlines that are sensational, apparently that's what sells, that, that's what we hear. <laughs> you know, everybody wants to become a tabloid, you know. <laughs> so that, apparently that's what sells, that's what Namibians want. I'm not convinced about that. There is a lot of room for <laughs> constructive news, for positive news about the actions of the president, about the actions of government, about our country, society at large. So we also need to bring those out. The type of journalism that worries me is one that ignores progress in society. And yeah. that's why I'm worried about when a journalist talks about hatred of Namibians for the head of state. A journalist talks, uh, talks like that. I get worried. Now, when that person, that person in a newsroom mm. is a dangerous journalist, is a politician. Mm. And that's what we are cautioning against. You know, we need to remain journalists. If you are a professional journalist, you need to remain that. You need to present facts. Is it not a fact that uh, the president has, even, even on social media and um, in society as large, at large, the president has been under attack? And, 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 and by, by, by members of society, and when a journalist is, is talking about it, it obviously few, comes from... loud voices. You know, you must... You know, now look at that barometer, how okay. dangerous that is. Okay. Now, from now, a senior journalist, look at that, that barometer, how dangerous that is. It's not dangerous. To say, apparently, the president is hated because people on social media, you know, with no, uh, I said fake society. accounts as well. <sighs> it might even be you. Okay, fine, fair enough. Now, I'm saying... You are saying now it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous barometer. Yes, but, it but, is. But now let me bring it to you that the, the oh society, right. the, the an constitution... Elected, an elected leader by Namibians, mm -hmm. sovereigns, you know, yeah. then it means that you don't even believe in democracy. So, so you don't even no. believe what it means when, the Nam when Namibians express themselves freely to say that President Gengob is the best amongst us. He's the one who's going to lead us for, for five years. That's the barometer that you must use about a popularly elected president. Okay. Not any other barometer no, no, where no. you say you when, pick when up I, a few I things to on social that, media. I wanted to bring that, that up and you that, said, and you said I'm, a, I'm a politician. Now I'm saying in 2014, President Gengob got 87% uh, of the vote. Yes. 20, I mean, uh, 2019, uh, uh, 57, yeah. 57, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the 30% the that he lost, where do you think that vote no, went to? No, no, is, why, is, isn't that sentiment, no, 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 I'm asking, isn't that uh, sentiment of, of the electorate saying we are unhappy with something? Even if it's 30%, and this is where democracy comes and, 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 and when people in power or governments want to, to, to spin this. Democracy, just because it means ruling by the majority and just because the president was uh, popularly elected does not mean that you must ignore the voices of the minority. Even if you are saying it's still any Mongudi, the constitution still allows me to have a voice. And if a journalist comes and takes Tileni's voice, even if he's a dissident or the only one in, in the whole country who feels uh, something wrong about uh, the presidency, Tileni should also should get a voice. 
and he should his concerns must be aired because when you are when you are trying to to to, to just you know uh, 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 sen and that's the censorship that Toivo is talking about because you are trying to oppress a voice no, or no, uh, even if it's the minority you are trying to oppress no, a no, voice no, no, or no, a viewpoint no I think the, there's, there's a mistake that you are making a fundamental one here about what it means to be elected uh, yesterday the, the highest court in Kenya validated the victory of uh, William Ruto I think he won by 51% yes. uh, President Gengop uh, in the last election had 57% of the vote. It's three years down the line where we are now. What is the assumption once a president is elected? He's elected by Namibians. Mm -hmm. That's the assumption. Yes. And that's the assumption that you must work with. That this is the popularly elected president by the Namibian people. In our system, uh, I mean, you can look at other systems where presidents are elected through, you know, the parliament, ours, it's sovereigns. You know, it's a direct election, universal suffrage. So it means a whole lot when it's but does, fifty. Does, does it insulate fifty plus? Doesn't yeah. does it insulate the president then? Because b because doctor, you you in many of your statements that, that and 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 what I find also very very uh, cheeky of you is that you keep using the twenty fourteen. <laughs> result. Mm -hmm. Even in, in your latest, uh, a week ago in, in your statement, you spoke about 87%. That 87% is gone, Chief. People gave the president 57% only, mm -hmm. meaning he lost, um, meaning that 43% uh, th uh, of the people in this country do not believe in his leadership. Now, how do we just say that because he was elected, even if he was elected 100%, not, not mm -hmm. only that, it doesn't give him the... Toivo, sorry, can I get to but that? Why mm -hmm. is the president elected? The president is elected because the, 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 the populace, the masses feel this is the person who can deliver, who can address our issues. Now, doctor is talking about uh, uh, town hall meetings that were, that were pu and, and they were published and they were written about. And they were positive that people felt and we did write about them positively that the people felt the president came to their doorstep mm. to hear their concerns. But if we follow, if we go back now, why we are publishing is because people are coming back and saying, well, in 2014, we felt healthcare was an issue. Today, 2022, healthcare is still an issue. In 2014, education was an issue. Today, it's still an issue sanitation so when we are bringing about those failures it's actually a, an unfulfilled or broken promise from the government or the ruling party or the president who's leading it now when we are bringing about this issue that there is unfulfilled promises or broken promises that's when we are attacked that yeah you just no, no, want no, to no, focus we, on the negative no no we you just we, want to attack the president that is not our, I think uh, also as a senior, as, as a senior journalist and uh, the two of you who are senior journalists in the profession, uh, you have the benefit of uh, history and insight. Uh, and uh, I'm sure also analytically, you are very advanced in terms of understanding the nature of a presidency, understanding the nature of the challenges facing Namibia. And when you look at uh, the the gang of presidency from 2015. Uh, you would agree with me that uh, President Gengob faced unprecedented crises during his presidency. And uh, that, that should be also 100%. your analysis. 100%. And I think when you talk about the 57%, that should also be your analysis. That should be the education that you share with Namibians. It's important to provide the context in which a result is achieved. Now here you are sitting here, the two of you, avoiding that context. We understand very well that uh, COVID-19, for example, um, droughts, uh, the commodity crisis, bust. these are peculiar incidences that impacted the ability of the gang of presidency to deliver on certain things. But notwithstanding those challenges, this country 
is still standing. I don't want to imagine this country what would have been if we didn't have the leadership of President Gain Group over the past eight years and the number of challenges, major challenges that we face. I think it's also a point of interrogation for all of us as citizens and importantly for you as journalists who sit with uh, editors, you know, you, you opine, you see things, but also your reports. It's important to highlight and to talk about some of these things in a, in a manner that is non-partisan, in a manner that don't make you appear like a politician on the front <laughs> <page>. Politician. <laughs> okay. We go for another break and then return for the last part of this uh, exciting uh, engagement. <sighs> NMH at one brings you news from all across Namibia. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact NMH one at synergy.com.na. NMH at one, your lunchtime news companion. Sunset News is a daily news show focusing on national headlines as well as international news. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, please contact sunset at synergy.com.na. Sunset News, don't end your day without us. We continue the conversation. Now, Doc. The <clears throat> let's touch uh, in this last part of the show on uh, some of the pronouncements that you've made in the past couple of days. You issued a statement, you wrote, you wrote uh, quite an extensive opinion piece that appeared uh, in various newspapers here. Um, in reference to what we have written at Namibian Sun, you spoke about um, the, the call by Hadino Ishongwa that the president must um, honor some sort of tradition that exists in Swapo to just uh, elevate or maybe not elevate but endorse <laughs> uh, the candidacy of the incumbent vice president of the party Natimwa and Indaitwa. And you are saying that where was he when all these things were happening? But when President Hagegengop was the vice president, he was endorsed. Why, why is he not doing the same now? Um, so he contested, mm. but he was endorsed by the sitting president. Mm. Now I think the, the key aspect, which is uh, a fair point that uh, uh, we ask in uh, our press release is where the gentleman was when uh, uh, President Kengo was contested, notwithstanding the endorsement. Uh, an endorsement by a president is very important, we do accept that. But um, we also accept the fact that uh, um, there are those who went fully against the guided democracy that some believed in and continue to believe in. Democracy is not just about uh, elections. We need to understand that. It becomes, uh, an, it becomes, um, um, you know, uh, democracy is also about consensus. It's very important to reach consensus. Now, in the environment where you don't have consensus, it becomes also uh, challenging for an endorsement. Yeah. It becomes a moot point. It, it could also become uh, even more div divisive, especially when it comes from the head of state. Uh, so the president has made his, his position very clear on that issue, that uh, uh, he won't endorse uh, anybody for the position of vice president. Uh, because, uh, you know, he is uh, the custodian of the unity of the party. Mm. And uh, in a case where you have uh, candidates and the president chooses a side, you are likely to run into serious difficulties. So uh, that's the, the position of President Gengo. And uh, it's a fair question to ask when, uh, at a time when he was endorsed and others chose to challenge him, those voices of reason now, um, they were quiet and they should have spoken to say, wait a minute, 
we have a vice president who is endorsed by an important moral authority in the person of the president of the party. So we need to rally behind that person. Uh, so that didn't happen. <laughs> I, and I, it's I, where I, we are, causing a pushback. where, where we are, yeah. uh, we're in a situation where the president as the head of the family would have to ensure the unity of the family mm. and not uh, uh, picking one side over another. I think uh, in your editorial you also raised that, that point quite eloquently, even though it's, uh, it has its own limitations in the manner in which you raised it. But, you know, <laughs> it was okay. important I, to raise <laughs> <to laughs> it. When, when okay. we get into that conversation, I just want to ask you a question. I mean, uh, I, I, the president's decision, has that not caused pushback? Because we've reported that there has been stra a strenuous relationship or the, 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 the relationship is not as cordial anymore with his, uh, well, it's, at government, it's uh, his uh, deputy prime minister and uh, foreign affairs minister, no, and at the party is his vice president. I mean, uh, the, the refusal or the, the decision, let me not say refusal, let me, the, the decision not to publicly endorse his vice president. Has that not caused him problems? No, and that's where we've been writing about that. No, your report is, uh, um, is unfounded okay. uh, on those aspects, and again, uh, anonymous sources, but then again, your, your, your own code of ethics and conduct, it warns you against the use of those anonymous sources, mm -hmm. but you continue to use them. So you are going against your own code of ethics and conduct. Uh, President Gengo enjoys a healthy relationship with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Indian Relations and Cooperation. Uh, they consult each other, they talk to each other on issues within the province of the Deputy Prime Minister as Minister of Indian Relations and Cooperation. And also the lie that was told about the Deputy Prime Minister being excluded from uh, external missions. And again, without any evidence, I would have expected The evidence you is there, though. No, 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 I would have expected you to, the evidence is there. to look at the missions mm -hmm. and tell us, no, she was excluded from this one, from that one. We've, but, list, we've listed but, those. But mm -hmm. what you also need to know is that the Deputy Prime Minister, and especially in that role as Minister of Indian Relations and Cooperation, she has many missions of her own. In some instances, she would participate. She was the, the, the Deputy Prime Minister was with the President in, uh, in Kigali. One of those rare moments where they share trips. And uh, she was with the president uh, in uh, which other country? Just recently. But if you and nobody, you, you didn't signal that, oh, wait a minute. She, but if you go She if was you go supposed back. to join the president for, for, for Jamaica, Cuba, and so on. So some of these things are inventions. If you go you back know, in so, history. So let's also be very careful not to create unnecessary uh, sensational stuff. Let's stick to the facts. If, but if you go back in history, it's, it's, mm. it's, and, and that's part of where uh, we might have picked up that something might not be right. Because most of the uh, foreign relations or foreign affairs ministers in the past have often almost been at every, almost every trip or engagement that the president is, especially outside. because. That person, whoever is manning or you know having that or holding that office, is actually often the link between the president and the outside world, and and that's where we we we, we observe that. Well, you know, is this is this normal? Is it not? And then that's when the information starts trickling in that no, but actually there there appears to be a strenuous but relationship. But, but Tileni, Tileni, uh, uh, we have the privilege of attending a number of summits mm -hmm. and high-level meetings where you have heads of state. Foreign ministers are not always there. <laughs> okay. you know, so it's not a standard okay. procedure. Okay. You know, so uh, just go and do your research. Let me ask and you a question. And you will arrive at that very same conclusion. Let me just ask go and do it. Yeah, let me ask you a question. Tilene, I'm not sure in, uh, whether in the 
edition of uh, the Namibian this week on Tuesday, they say, I don't know whether you are the, one of the co-authors, mm -hmm. in which it is suggested, the headline actually says, the president is backing the group that is uh, pushing the, prime, the current prime minister into the position of uh, vice today. president. If you can... It's today's, yeah, today's, it's today's, today's yes. paper. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, 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 you see, this is the thing. We, 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 and, and, and I'm not afraid of saying it because we, we've been hearing it and we've been writing about it, that we understood that the president did not see it fit to endorse uh, uh, um, his vice president mainly or because he does not want her to advance. Now, with that, a few a week ago or so, we also wrote an article that states that there's a breakdown in the relationship between the president of the party and his secretary general. Now, if you look at it, we, we are hearing that the secretary general and the vice president are in one slate, slate or mm -hmm. camp, whatever you want to call it. And, and, and they have a constituency that's supporting them. In the other constituency is now the, the camp or the leaders that are sort of aligned, seen as aligned to the president. And therefore, when, when, when we, 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 we are highlighting these things, that that could be the reason why the president is refusing to endorse his vice president and opting to go for his current prime minister. Now, we... Uh, uh, my good friend here would uh, accuse us of dreaming this up and you know we are using anonymous sources but unfortunately this is the discourse we are picking up you are, you and, are presenting and rumors as facts and and we, we are, and <laughs> are presenting and, and, and any good journalist worth their salt would be a fool to ignore information that's on the ground that's being repeated especially when it's persistent has, the president has pronounced himself on the issue Publicly, that, publicly. He not, uh, that he will not endorse a specific candidate. candidate. But, but yet but again, now, those are why you why are you still interested those in the like rumors? But it's, it's politics 101, uh, Dr. Engari, that um, you know there's a lot of public relations in politics, especially at the level of a president. And um, what uh, there is always pronouncements that are made public to present a particular picture. But if you look at uh, how these things are shaping up, we saw the endorsements, the nominations at the Politburo meeting this week. Behind the scenes. The way they came out speaks exactly, exactly 100% to what the media has been speculating. How could that just be a coincidence? Well, I think uh, you, you want me to, as press secretary, to, 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 to dive into swap party politics, um, which is not really my space. Uh, you may want to speak to the Secretary General, uh, the Vice President of the party in those capacities. But what I need to emphasize is the fact that uh, President Gengob has uh, publicly stated that uh, um, the question of him endorsing anybody for uh, the position that leads to a presidential candidate of the Sober Party is now moved because of the evolution. And I think he provides uh, some very sound arguments which deserve to be pulled out by journalists and to be interrogated. The evolution of the party over the past 10 years is such that such endorsements are becoming mood because you at that level when you endorse you endorse on the basis of a consensus on the basis of a clear understanding a meeting of minds among amongst comrades and not to endorse in a manner that leads to divisions yeah. i think the president president gengop is a is a man of unity uh, you also know that very well that in 2017 a sitting head of state with a score of 2014 was contested for the party presidency at a Congress. And I didn't see you writing articles, newspaper reports saying, this is a scandal. <laughs> it's not a scandal. It's a scandal. It's a democratic a, a, process. A, 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 head, of, a head of state <laughs> elected by 87% of the population, a Soviet score, mm -hmm. is now sitting in a Congress subjected, subjected to a contest 
for the presidency of the party. But <laughs> you was, was it's okay, allowed. Let, you let me ask no, what is, allowed. Uh, does this not have to do with horse trading or what we call it horse trading? Because if you look at it, President Kaingob in 2017 openly endorsed his current vice president and the secretary general. And you said, these are the people I feel I can work with. So what changed? And you are saying that the, the evolution of the party, but I mean, the, 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 the system is still there. President King was a candidate for the presidency of the Sopo party at the time. Yes, but he and also I, I think endorsed. you must also accept the fact that currently mm -hmm. um, his own comrades in the party have said the president of the Sopo party will not be contested. I think it's a reflection of the leadership inclusive leadership that the president has, in, has been able to provide between 2017 and now. The position has become redundant chief, you know this. No, 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 it's not. It's, 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 no. it's be, being president of the party now is no longer what is the most important one. The most important one is well, vice president. Well, I think, uh, you know, yeah. in, uh, in 20... So you might as well endorse him. No, no you see, that's... Nothing the, to lose. No, you see, that's yeah. the bias I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> 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 My good brothers, it was a pleasure having both of you on the show. Yeah, Doc, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Jelani. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that thank was a uh, nice <laughs> agenda. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. I did. Thank you for watching. All right. The Evening Review is a daily interview-based talk show that dissects and expounds on current affairs as they occur in Namibia. The show aims at reaching Namibians of all age groups who seek better understanding of the state of current affairs in the country. This show is broadcasted on NTV, oneup2.com and cross-shared on the following Facebook platforms, Namibian Sun and Namibia Media Holdings. The Evening Review focuses on interviews, latest news and up-to-the-minute current events. Contact evening at synergy.com.na Evening Review Unpacking today's pertinent issues.